welcome back. If you've just joined us, you're watching the news at 10 on Channel's television, coming to you live from Lagos. A reminder of our top stories. Senate moves to curb extrajudicial killings and other offences by police officers as it passes the police reform bill, prescribes confirmation of the IGP by the upper chamber. Abuja High Court grants request by EFCC to arrest former ministers of Petroleum and Justice Dani Tete and Mohamed Adoke implicated in the Malabu oil scandal. Federal government insists on not removing fuel subsidy, so there's no measures in place at the moment to cushion the effects of subsidy removal. And former Peruvian President Alan Garcia dies after shooting himself as police move to arrest him in his house with a bribery allegation. TV.com has more information for you and on youtube.com forward slash channels web you can watch our videos. You can also watch us on your mobile device via your browser or download the Channels TV app for Android and iOS devices from their respective stores. Besides giving you access to news and updates on the go, the Channels TV and Channels 24 app has an eyewitness feature that you can use to share pictures, videos or news of happenings around you. Just install the app, tap and swipe to refer to the menu and then follow. The instructions. The Federal Executive Council has approved a loan facility of $200 million to finance the Nigerian electrification project. The loans are to be sourced from the Africa Development Bank and the Africa Grow Together Fund. And this is part of approvals given by the Federal Executive Council meeting presided over by President Muhammadu Buhari in Abuja. Our State House correspondent Ibrahim Adra reports. The weekly council meeting considered memos presented by ministers and gave nine approvals. The ministers concerned are those of finance, education, transportation, and the federal capital territory. The council approved sourcing of $200 million for the Nigeria electrification project. In addition, another loan of $20 million is to be sourced and spent on the Lagos State Strategic Transportation Master Plan. Specifically, the money will go to rehabilitation of urban roads and construction of bus herbs, amongst others. In all, the government is to borrow over $220 million. This prompted the question of Nigeria's debt profile and its implication for the country. We still say that at 19% to GDP, our borrowing is still low. What is allowed by Fiscal Responsibility Act is a maximum of 25% of our GDP. Compared to our comparator countries, Ghana, South Africa, Angola, Brazil, we are the lowest in terms of borrowing. What we have is a revenue problem. When revenues perform at the aggregate rate of 55%, it hinders your ability to operate as you have planned in your budget. The Abuja Lokoja A1 Expressway. The FCT got approval for various road constructions worth over 3.6 billion naira to be executed within nine months. The Nigeria Civil Aviation Authority is to get operational vehicles at a contract worth over 400 million naira. The president's spokesman, Garbusheu, said the bill backing the establishment of the Nigeria Army University Bureau is ready and have been approved by the council. The bill is now to go to the National Assembly for legislative action. From the presidential villa, Ibrahim Adra, Channels Television News. With about 42 days to the end of the Buhari administration's first term, the president has asked for a comprehensive status report on policies, programs and projects from cabinet members on the respective ministries, departments and agencies. A statement by the senior special assistant to the president on media and publicity, Garba Shehu, says the deadline for submission of these reports to the presidential audit committee in the office of the vice president is Wednesday, April the 24th, 2019. In addition to this directive, the secretary to the government of the federation, Mr. Boss Mustafa, has also issued a circular asking members of the Federal Executive Council to ensure that all outstanding memoranda they intend to present to the council are submitted to the Cabinet Affairs Office in the office of the SGF, not later than Tuesday, April the 30th, 2019. The circular also informed members that the 9th and 10th meetings of the council have been rescheduled to Thursday, April the 25th, and Thursday, May the 2nd, 2019, because of the Easter break and the May Day celebrations. Some prominent Nigerians, including OPEC Secretary General Mr. Mohamed Barkindo, 
the chairman, Channels Media Group, Mr. John Momo, and the founder of ITO, Mr. Benedict Peters, are to be honored by the Euro Knowledge Forum at the House of Lords in London on April the 29th, 2019. Other Nigerians to be honored at the ceremony are the former Minister of Trade and Investment, Mrs. Onikweku Akonde, the chairman of Africa Prudential PLC, Mrs. Eniola Padayomi, and the brand strategist and public speaker, Mr. Afolabe Andu. The event, which is organized by Euro Knowledge, an international consultancy and advisor to many leading businesses, as well as governments around the world, will be graced by captains of industry, policymakers, and business magnates, among others. Euro Knowledge explains in a statement that the awards seek to acknowledge and celebrate exemplary leaders who have made significant contributions in their specific fields and emerged as role models, tech giants, innovators, and community and inspirational leaders. A former president of Botswana, Mr. Festus Mogai, a governor, Central Bank of Ghana, Mr. Ernest Addison, have also been listed to receive the awards. According to the organizers of the event, several activities have been lined up as part of the ceremony, beginning with a tour of the House of Lords, followed by a forum on trade, investment, and governance. Let's cross over to Abuja now, and here's Ibrahim Adra. Ibrahim. Hello, Ijeoba. Hello. Good to see you. Now, two former traffic wardens indicted over the death of an officer of the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps, Olga Jumbo, have been dismissed and are facing prosecution. Their dismissal was announced by the Nigeria Police Force in a statement. Even as a civil society group, the Joint Civil Action Against Extrajudicial Killings staged a peaceful protest in Abuja demanding justice for Mr. Jumbo, who was allegedly murdered by the police. From the unity fountain in Abuja, members of the Joint Civil Action Against Extrajudicial Killings marched to the office of the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice. Singing songs of solidarity, the group makes a final stop in front of the gate of the Federal Ministry of Justice as they are prevented from gaining access into the premises of the ministry. <laughs> With no government official to attend to them, the convener of the group presents their demand to members of the press. Our demands are very simple and straightforward, that justice should be done for Oga Jumbo, Kolade, and the several others that have been killed extrajudicially by the police. You recall that a couple of days ago, on Monday to be exact, we held a press conference where we demanded that the IG should establish a commission of inquiry to investigate all cases of extrajudicial killings by the police. A human rights campaigner, a member of the Bring Back Our Girls campaign, lends her voice to the demand. It is shameful that those people who have, have been portrayed by the law, who are set by the law to protect us, are the ones killing us. Ogajombo was taking his children to school when he was killed. Not only was he killed, but he was killed in front of his two children, a six-year-old and a three-year-old. The mother looked at it. And this is somebody from the Civil Defense Force. Yet, the Civil Defense is not saying anything. While the peaceful protest continued, the Nigeria Police Force, in a statement, announced the dismissal and prosecution of two former traffic wardens allegedly responsible for the death of Oga Jumbo. The statement says the arraignment of the Israel traffic wardens is sequel to the outcome of investigation into the case of alleged discreditable conduct and unlawful exercise of authority reported against them on the 20th of March 2019. Although the officers are being prosecuted, the Inspector General of Police again reiterated his commitment that under him, no form of impunity or man's inhumanity to man will go unpunished. Well, there has yet been another protest, this time by some hunters in Iola, the Adamao State capital, who took to the streets demanding justice over the death of their colleague, allegedly in police custody during interrogation. The aggrieved hunters who blocked the busy Mubi runabout in Iola said they wanted the police to immediately release the corpse of the slain hunter. Members of the Hunters Association converge on Mubi roundabouts in Yola, a few meters away from the Dobeli Divisional Police Station. <laughs> Again, 
again, gunshots and tear gas fill the air as residents camber to safety. Motorists are forced to divert to other routes or wait for long hours on the road. The protesters say their grievances are with the police, who allegedly killed one of their members in custody during interrogation. The team, they said he's an armed robber. Then why is he's not an armed robber? Kalam Mohammed, a DPO of Dobeli Division. That's, we are looking for our rights. They are looking for money, it's about, it's about, what is it? It's about 150,000 naira before they release in dead body. The slain hunter was reportedly picked from his home by men of the police force on the midnight of Monday. He was said to have been bitten by the police during interrogation before he was rushed to a specialist hospital in Yola, where he died. How can a man that is suspect, you, they, you, you went to his house and took him, you beat him like this until he dead, and you, you start telling us that uh, he has something uh, ill with him? While we are staying with this man over 20 years, he, will, he can even spend 10 years without even headache. I know him. The public relations officer of the Adamawa State Police Command says the divisional police officer in charge of the Dubeli police station and five other policemen allegedly involved in the interrogation have been arrested. Uh, arrest was made, was uh, undergoing interrogation and uh, along the line, uh, I think he had an ailment that was not uh, ill detected and uh, when he was taken to the hospital, he gave us the post and uh, immediately the Commissioner of Police Adama State Command CP A. Madaki has directed with immediate effect the arrest of all the uh, IPOs involved in this case. <laughs> This protest is coming a few days after the acting inspector general of police announced that the actions of some officers is pitching the force against the citizens they pledge to protect, with a warning that airing officers will be dealt with decisively. The hunters are, however, waiting anxiously to see if the needed officers will be made to account for their action that led to the death of their colleague. Now let's step onto the political turf. Just hours after the ruling, All Progressives Congress adopted Mr. Femi Bajabiamila as its candidate for the position of Speaker of the House of Representatives of the Ninth Assembly. Now that decision has been challenged. Mr. John Dege, a lawmaker from Benue State, also declared for the position and called on the party to have a rethink, saying there is still room for negotiation. At an event where he made the declaration, the lawmaker insists he is loyal to the party but believes that North Central Zone is not convinced as to why its lawmakers should not contest for speaker. Time for a break now. When we return, the Debt Management Office fixes April the 24th for issuance of its 30-year bond. That's on our business news. Do join us again. <laughs>